Hi, Julia Watts here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be making a card featuring the Sentiment of Yours Floral Curios Corsage Optigan, uh, which is a, an Optigan frame stamp. And I have it here on my desk. So this is a little A6 stamp. I say little, it's not that little really. Um, so you've got a, an array of um, flowers on, on top and bottom and they do mirror each other. And it's part of the Floral Curios collection uh, from Sentimentally Yours. And there are actually six frames in the collection. And there are three posies and three uh, corsage. And the difference is that the corsage has a daisy and the um, posy has a pansy. Um, so we're going to stamp this one. And we're going to stamp my stamping platform. I've already die cut an octagon. And um, don't tell Phil, this is our secret. I've actually cut an octagon out using the um, stitch, the, let me think, deboss double stitched octagons. They're not available yet. They obviously complement the, um, the deboss double stitch rectangles and the deboss double stitch squares. But like I say, they're not out yet and there are other, other sh uh, shapes coming. I think it's about September when they're coming out, but ju just don't tell him that I've used them. <laughs> I've got them, so, you know, I thought I'd use it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the back because this has been cut to uh, size. And we're just going to pop that onto some um, kitchen roll into my platform. <coughs> If there's a funny noise, it's the wind on my on my windows. Sounds like the cat snoring, but on this occasion it isn't. Stretch this out up here. I haven't used this stamp yet. I don't know why, because it's really pretty. And I think we're going to have it so that our octagon is like so. So we've got the frame either side. Let me just have a look at this and check that we are we're about even. It will never be perfect because it's me, but uh, I think that's where we go. You can use the um, the uh, debossed, double debossed uh, octagons and the eyelet octagons as well. Obviously, you can fussy cut. You can do all sorts of things with these stamps, but um, I wanted to use this one because I'm going to be using the rectangles as well. Um, so, just don't tell him. What he doesn't know won't hurt him. <laughs> and we're going to start with the Nocturne vs. Fine Claire. Nice, good, juicy ink pad. So go around the frame. I didn't actually peel it off, so I, I can't see any air bubbles, so I think we're all right. It's not as big as some of the frames. Let's make sure it's really, really well inked. As I said, this I've not used this one before. A nice clean stamp. Nice like stamps are never clean. Ever, ever, ever. Yeah, good press. You can go the next size up, but because of what I'm doing, I want to choose this size. Hopefully, it'll all just about fit. Give it a good press to give that ink a chance to settle in. And I am using the um, the super smooth watercolour card from um, Sentimentally Yours which is perfect for stamping on it is super smooth and it, the, the watercolours just move so well on it it's it's the best really for uh, stamping and watercolouring come on get my pokey tool I think I'll go again just to make it a little bit darker it has stamped beautifully oh But we, I'm going to go again just because I can. I think I might need to re ink this ink pad. You will find all the best fine clairs and all the re inkers on my website. I'll give you the link to that in a moment. And also um, the other products that we're using, um, aside from the uh, 
one I'm not supposed to be using. I will have it when it's out. <laughs> give it a good press. I'll give that ink a chance to settle in. That'll give you my website address. There we go. JulieWattsCrafts.co.uk. I only ship to UK addresses. Um, if there's something you want that I haven't got, or if you're outside the UK, then obviously you can find the products over on Phil's website, which is Honey Pop Crafts. That noise, if you heard it, that was the cat. <laughs> Surrounded by things that make snoring noises. There we go, that's much better. That's darker, isn't it? That's beautiful. That fits really nicely, obviously, in that particular die. I'm going to leave that in place for now and uh, we'll, we'll do our sentiment while we're at it. Because we're, we're in here. This is me cleaning. Let's put this away. And if you just snip the top off of your packaging, the hangy bit, then you can use these like a wallet and you can just slide your stamps back in again and then you'll be able to flick through them. So let's have a sentiment. So I'm going to do it this way. So we probably need a horizontal sentiment or not a mahoosive sentiment. Uh, happy anniversary would be nice. Happy birthday. Yeah, I think I want a two-liner though. So birthday wishes. Okay, let's go for happy anniversary. I like that. I might have used this one before. Let's make sure it's nice and straight. I think it is. We'll go with that. It's straightish anyway. If somebody wants to get their ruler out, then uh, fine. Actually, these stunts are just beautiful as they are. They don't really need colouring, but we're going to. We're going to give them a bit of colour. Just a little bit light at the top. Let's just do it again. That's better. And you've got just teeny tiny little hearts on this sentiment. Really cool. And as it's an anniversary card, we do what we've done, I've done before. There's lots of little hot there's lots of little hearts in here. You can grab that's a little heart. Up there. That's another dinky little one down here. So I like to have two. Let's go with my hand. They're quite sticky when they're new. They're not sticky as in gluey, but they don't want to let go of you. Is that going to be all right, do you think? Yeah, let's get rid of that. And these are silhouettes, so we might need to do these a couple of times, we'll see. By silhouette, I mean solid stamps rather than an outline stamp. You don't need to press hard, because they're small stamps, you don't want them to squidge. Not that these will squidge actually, because they're photopolymer. Acrylic are more likely to squidge than photopolymer. Perfect, perfect. Okay, let's go before we lose them. They're only these little stamps. These are the sweetheart sentiments from the Floral Curios. And within this set, you get 27 stamps, which is a heck of a lot. That's an A5 set. Right, so we can fetch this out of here now. 
you will get a little bit of kitchen roll on the back but it's so thin it's not going to make any difference to anything and we're going to start doing a little bit of colouring in not a lot just a little bit and then I'll go away and finish it off there's mine there it is so I'm using the watercolour blending brush pens and I've, I've made myself a swatch, I always do that, I get a set out, I've got two sets actually, I've got one that's colour sorted um, which is my original set and some of them are actually um, running out after four, nearly five years I think it is, um, so uh, maybe it's three or four, I don't know, it's a long time, anyway. Uh, and then there's some that are actually in their sets. And these, these I've actually pulled out, done a swatch, and uh, so that I, then I know which set it's got to go back in into. It's not very easy to tell from the, the tips which is which, but you can then just double check uh, against the swatches if that makes sense. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use as my backing i'm going to use a paper from the delightfully daisy paper pack from sentimentally yours and i do have a few of these left in stock so i thought it would be nice to use them because there are daisies um in the um corsage um elements and there's also daisies in the beautiful blooms and daisies in the uh, beautiful borders set as well and there is another video uh, which has just gone live uh, yesterday uh, which uh, uses just the daisies uh, with this particular backing paper so have a look for that on my youtube channel so yes yeah, so we're going to use um, this paper here from this paper pad so we're gonna we're gonna use this as our base to colour in. So I've pulled out. So this this sort of orangey yellow here is is quite similar to the centres of the daisies. And if you look here, let me hold this up so you can see here. That flower is very 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 similar to where's it gone? This flower here. So we're gonna say that that flower is that flower so we're going to color that in in a similar way to what it is there so we want the darker orange so we want this one that's from set four Let's see if it's that one it is so we're going to have that around the centers of this and we're actually going to leave the center of this white i think or maybe a pale yellow, maybe that yellow. Anyway, so we're going to go around here, just like that. And I'm going to go down on this bit that's folded sort of under. And I think that that's part of it as well. I think, saying it is anyway, okay. And then I do this but let's do this at the same time because it's just easier than me trying to remember what I've used that's what that's what you do is you'd I personally actually would go around and color everything that is the same flower and needs the same color at the same time then we're going to take this one from number three which is this one just checking and then we can pull that colour out from there. I'm going into that orange as well. And the pen will blend with the other pen. And so that it, the blend is seamless. On some card it isn't. But on watercolour card it is. And you see that looks very much like that there that's the idea anyway so we'll do this one here as well sometimes circular motions are better for blending and you will find that while the ink is drying as well it will continue to blend out and lighten slightly so those are they. 
Then the daisies, all the daisies have got is they've actually, I mean, they've actually got kind of a touch of blue. Um, so we might want to ground actually a blue. nice light blue look and this is from set three as well so just so I know right on the chart set three as well so for this one the daisies the daisies are there's one at the back here so we just put a little bit of pale blue there and we've got this one here won't do all of these. Because it's only a hint, we we'll just use our water brush and get it going. And we can just pull some of that blue out. So we're not leaving it that kind of naked off-white colour that this the watercolour card is. But we're not giving it much colour at all, so it's 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 almost like when you put a bit of blue on snow, just to make it look other than white. I mean that that's actually very light. Let's just have a tiny bit more. Ever so, ever so, ever so light. You can barely see that I've done anything. I can see in the naked, the naked eye, but obviously you, you probably can't. So then I did the other side as well. And then there's no roses on here at all. So we can just decide what we want to do with the roses. I think we'll keep them quite pale. So we'll take this one here, this number three, yellow, sort of orangey yellow, and just sprinkle, uh, rub some on the mat. And I will do all the roses at the same time because otherwise we'll end up wasting ink and we don't need to do that. And then just take a mist misting brush. Is it called misting? It's not a brush, is it? Mr. Bottle. <laughs> I hope you know what I'm talking about because I don't. <laughs> and we're just going to do the rose in this really pale yellow so it's entirely different to the rest <laughs> I've never heard a window make this noise before it is the window it's not it's not the cat this time that and it's not another rose there so it was just the rose here the leaf a bit but the leaves are going to be green so that's fine okay so that's where we're at clean that off always remember to clean your brush because otherwise the next time you use it it's going to be something else and the pens are so highly pigmented very good right so uh, what else have we got? We've got these little flowers here, which we could do in a similar way to these here, but I think we'll go for um, this number three here, this lighter orange. I think it's this one. Yes. And we just go, I'm just going to do them as is. I'll do, do just this side and then I'll do the others in a minute. And you could then come in and put a little bit of the 
bright orange yellow first one just just in the center that's that one so you could just put a little bit you won't see much of it just a tiny bit okay so, so that's those we know what we're doing with that because we've done those we've done the roses we know what we're doing with the daisies and we know what we're doing with those so there's just the leaves to go so we've got uh, that one i think that's that one and that's that one yes so that's the dark one this is the lighter one so we're just going to do along the veins i love this bright one from set three There's two different types of leaves. So that's that's a different one. It's just the two leaves that are different. So then we're going to go back with our water brush and just move that colour around. It's quite a lot of water on my brush from where I cleaned it. It's a good idea to dob your brush off every now and again, otherwise there'd be so much green on there that you just make the whole thing um, green and you won't see any graduated colour because you want we want it darker on the back on the veins and then pulled out on the inside. That's that one. And then we we'll go with the other green. Is that the number one? I put them in different places so I can remember what I'm doing when I come to finish this off. And that's going to be dark green, but not a really bright green because this is quite a bright background. So I don't want to go for the moss greens, I want to go for a bright green. Okay, so that's where we're at. So I'm going to just finish off doing that and then we'll come back and we'll um, finish the card off because it is quite a simple card. Isn't, this isn't complicated at all. Okay, so we're all coloured in now. I did put that um, bright um, orangey yellow into the centre of the um, that flower and also into the centre of the daisies too. But that, that's the only thing that I did extra. And I've got some one millimeter foam uh, tape on and I've cut the next uh, deboss double stitch octagon out of the super smooth card and I've popped that on and I've got some more one, one millimeter tape on the bottom. But first of all, I'm gonna put this in a frame. So I've got um, a frame cut using the deboss double stitched rectangles here. Um, I have to think what they were called every single time I have to think what they're called and I've used the largest die and the largest bit one so that's the biggest frame that you can actually create unless you're creating a tiny frame when you put these two dies together okay add to that and what I've also done is I've got some edges here and these are cut using the um this is the elegant set from the edges collection from sentimentally yours um they come on a dl magnetic sheet but mine don't often come on sheets and you get four different borders in here and hopefully you can see here that this one here is going to coordinate with your stitched torn dies uh, and i've used this one here the thing is that this side of the die uh, away from the decorative edge does not have an outside cutting edge so you can have however deep a border you want to um, which is absolutely wonderful and of course you can do your petticoat cards as well with them as well so uh, that's that and I do have those uh, in stock on my website 
and I'm going to have one at the top and one at the bottom. So this is the dodgy bit really, trying to line this up straight. So I've got some two millimetre foam tape on the back of this here. And I'm just going to take a little bit of this one off here, but not all of it. And the same on this side here. This isn't the full length. The full length is, um, well, it's about eight inches actually. So if I take my die here, I get off. You can see my frame. It's, it's my frame is the largest one from the rectangles, and so it would fit down the length. Let me show you. Would fit down the length of that. So they are about just under. I think they're twenty centimeters. So which is my sticky side? That's my sticky side. <clears throat> I know I've got to trim a little bit off. But I want to just line this bottom um, deboss line up with the bottom of my frame. And I should have just part of one of the leaves either side. Let's see. Let's give it so much if it's got any more. Because it's going to look odd if it's not straight. Okay, that's that. So that's what I picked up on there. And we can cut the excess away before we go down. And then we do exactly the same thing on the other side. I mean, you could go all the way around, but then you have to think about mitering and uh, because the octagon is obviously it's like a square with the corners cut off, isn't it? An octagon. So, um, and it's going into a rectangle. We've got going to have more of the pattern paper showing um, on the bottom and the top than we are on the sides. And that's why I'm just having the border at the top and the bottom. There is a reason. So again, we're going to do the same thing. Get off. Oh, this side, obviously. So we're going to have, let's see, a bit of that petal and straight ish, hopefully. And then just trim off the excess here. So now we've got a pretty top and bottom to our frame. It's pretty, isn't it? Really pretty. Right, let's peel away the rest of our backing now. Can you hear it? Can you hear that? It's hilarious. Okay, so let's try and get this on here straight. Okay, I'm happy with that. I haven't had, added any extra glue because it's it's at the bottom of the frame, so it's not going to get. Um, pulled up at all and then we're going to add our topper just again with one, one millimeter foam tape so with the fact that you've got two lots of one millimeter between each of the octagons then that's going to be the same height as the actual frame which is two millimeter that's the speed of it. We will go slightly up. Try and get this straight. Can't we move? Sorry, camera. Hopefully, it's a little bit further up. I don't know if it is. <laughs> Probably 
be, isn't it? Now you could dress this up and you could put flowers on there as well, but I'm not going to. I'm going to, this is just a really simple card. So, so we're not going for, you know, lots of flowers and, and whatever. Obviously you can. This is just an idea to show you how you can frame the octagon with a rectangle. Right, we need some more glue up there, I think. We'll do, I'll do that later. So we're just going to add a gem to each um, corner of the frame. And these are the Aurora um, Gem Porium um, from Sentimentally Yours. And we'll use an 8mm in each corner, I think. You could add some random gems as well if you wanted to. In fact, we might. Let's just do these first. So let's pick up one of the eights with my pick up tool. If you manipulate the pick up tool in your fingers, then you'll it'll pick things up a bit easier. Right, so Super windy today. And one more. Happy with that. So let's just have. We'll have a gem on the line here. And we'll have another one there. And then we'll have. One there, and maybe one there. And we'll look, we're fishing for the fives now. So you don't get threes in the gems, because to get the facets, it would just be near on impossible. One more. Where are you? Come on. Okay. I think that's it. I'm happy with that. Oh, you can't quite see it. It's quite a big card, actually. Obviously, you could scale it down a little bit, but you've got to work around this octagon here. And I wanted to make sure I could see some of the, the, the pattern. No point having a back, backing paper if you're not going to see it. And I do like being able to have a layer of the backing paper outside the frame as well. So in fact, like I say, this is a biggie. So this does measure uh, nine inches by um, seven and three quarters. So it is quite large. But again, you could bring it down and instead of doing a rectangle, you could do a square and you could probably fit it on an eight by eight card. But I think that's quite pretty. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. As I said, you can get all the products on my website, juliawatchcrafts.co.uk. And you can also find them over at honeypotcrafts.co.uk. Please like and subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel. Uh, leave a comment on there. Uh, I love to read your comments and I reply uh, whenever I can. And um, I just need to say thank you for watching.